That's where we're going to land on our qualifying cross country. Now their airspace um, extends up to 200 feet above the airfield. We're flying, well, it's hard to say what altitude we're flying at because we're flying at so many, but we're flying at uh, uh, currently about 2,300 feet above ground level. So if this airfield was at, uh, no, actually no, this is above sea level, no, let's get, must get this right, this is above sea level because the regional QNH is the is the pressure setting at sea level and we can see the sea and we can see that Shoreham is not called Shoreham by the sea for nothing so we know that uh, Shoreham's airspace extends 2000 feet up and we never really got below 2000 feet so we won't have infringed their airspace because they're pretty much at sea level aren't they and we're flying, uh, we've, we've always been flying more than 2,000 feet above sea level. Now, the nav is telling me to turn left. And I'm not opposed to that. I'm not saying I won't turn left. All I'm saying is, the sea's on the left. And this is not the Bermuda Triangle. I am not going to be flying out to sea just because the radio nav tells me to. I'm going to stay over the ground. Which I found from experience is a much more suitable place to land should you get into trouble. Not only that, I know that Goodwood is obviously, you know, they don't do much horse racing at sea. Not much call for seahorse racing. So if I go over the sea to Goodwood, I'm going wrong, aren't I, somewhere? So I'm going to assume it's on that peninsula, but I'm going to stay over the ground. And in fact, I'm not going to get too close to the um, conurbation there because while those playing fields do look lovely, I wouldn't like to try and land in one. I'd much rather land in one of these nice fields over here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stay somewhere. Where I'm happy. So there's the Isle of Wight there. There are two airfields on the Isle of Wight, Sandown and Benbridge. Benbridge is the uh, is a long tarmac strip that's associated with um, a manufacturer. And Sandown is a sort of the private strip, the grass strip. Actually, I don't know if it's still operational. I think it might still be operational, but not have any fuel. I don't know. You look it up. Sand down. When you fly a small plane, really, you tend to want to fly it between the smaller strips. South End is a good example. South End, lovely, owned by the council. Then all of a sudden, somebody wants to fly jets in and out. South the council thinks, great, we've got an international airport. It gets renamed South End International Airport. And all of a sudden, it goes up from £10 to land there to £50. It's not because it costs them five times as much, it's because they just, all of a sudden, they just don't want private pilots. They just don't want light aircraft landing and mucking up their nice uh, new international airport. So all the private pilots uh, leave South End, apart from the the flying club, the poor flying club that's 
still stuck there and got no choice but doesn't pay the full fee anyway and they don't go back once you sort of uh, cross an airport off your list that's it you find somewhere else to fly there are plenty uh, plenty of friendly uh, airstrips some of them really really quite long runways and very well looked after now let's do another free to check so fuel we've got tons of fuel everything's in the green Why didn't we pick up the fact that our radio navigation was up the spout at the last uh, Frida check? Hundred and seventeen point nine. Hundred and seventeen point nine. This is where it's useful to have two because you can see this one was the original one. Actually in front of us you can see an old airfield down there, can you see that? Someone's put a someone's ploughed up part of it. Yeah, so I can see that I'm right of the original track, but um but if I wanted to steer a direct track it would be about two four seven. So let's cut across. As I say I'm staying to the right really because of the um the conurbations to the left. Another river flowing in. What you can do, and it's useful in some planes, is uh, adjust the seat. You can literally move the seat up or down. I think... It's um, shift enter, moves it up, yeah. There we are, look, adjusted the seat upwards, so I can see over the nose better. Probably a bit more like the view I'm used to. Shift enter. And if you want to move it down, it's shift backspace. Shift enter. And if you completely mess it up and you want to put it back, it's control space. Oh no, that's not. Sorry, that just resets your viewpoint, not your um, your eyes, your eye line. Let's see if we put the eye line back up again, and then press Control Space. Ooh. resets everything, doesn't it? Right, stop mucking about with the seat. We're supposed to be doing this on the ground, not adjusting your seat in midair. Whenever I'm flying this trip, my mood changes about here. I'm sort of now, you know, when you're in a car and you think to yourself, oh, I'm, "I'm on holiday." This is the point at which I think in my plane, "Ah, I'm on holiday now." That's the Solent, Southampton Airport. There, well, ahead, you know. Don't like them. I tried to um, get across Southampton airspace once and they kept me waiting for about 20 minutes on the edge and this that was stupid because really I could have flown around it in 20 minutes you know and that's in the end that's what I did I just said look cancel my request for clearance through your airspace you idiots well, I didn't say the last bit 
and I just flew around it and I wasted 20 minutes in the air burning fuel 20 minutes flying in circles getting giddy waiting thinking swearing thinking why haven't they uh, cleared me through and this is Southampton we're not talking about Gatwick or Heathrow or anywhere here I mean, who wants to fly to Southampton? I've never seen any flights to Southampton. Now we've got a classic dilemma here. And it's a bit of a British dilemma. Because we're surrounded by the sea, don't you know? And so, um, and in a single engine plane, the most sensible thing to do is to cross water by the shortest route possible to minimize, obviously minimize your time during which if you've got engine failure, you'd end up in the briny. But, on the tried and trusted principle of it won't happen to me, we don't normally do that, do we? We normally go direct. Well, I don't know what happened to Goodwood. Basically, it just we just missed it. We just missed it. Wouldn't do that normally. That's very strange. We'll find it on the way back. Thing is, you see, visually, once you can see where you're going visually, you know where you're going, don't you? You can see I'm climbing a bit. That's because um, it's going to give me um, perhaps a bit more time if I'm near the coast to turn back or to glide onto the far coast. But the alternative, you see, will be to, to um, fly all the way along the coast here and then cross the sand down and then all the way back. And that's going to get us too, too close to Southampton and um, double the um, time. So we're going to climb up and go across direct. good idea to check your passengers are comfortable from time to time. I was flying once with someone. Everybody has to come up, don't they? They do it to see if they can do it, do you know what I mean? That's the worst type of passenger. The one that doesn't want to do it, but does it because they want to say they've done it. They're never going to do it again. They're not even sure they can do it. They just want to sort of see if they can do it. So I, um, I took off and within about three minutes she said to me, I'm going to be sick. I'm like, oh my god. I mean, you can see how good I am at flying the plane along straight and level with nothing to do, let alone deal with a passenger who's being sick. Anyway, we tried to find a sick bag. We have got sick bags in the plane. Couldn't find one in time. So we grabbed the only thing that was available, which was my flight bag, had everything in it, on my passport, my flying license, my medical certificate, all my charts, the charts were alright because they are wiped clean, the rest of it wasn't, but it was either that or the plane, it was either fill up the flight bag or fill up the entire flight deck, and I thought I'm not going to want to be flying along if I can't see the instruments. Anyway, we, we, we landed, nearest airfield. What, 
what disaster that was. So that's another rule. If you ever go flying in the real world with someone who's never been flying before, give them a sick bag. Even doesn't matter how happy and cheerful they are, give them a sick bag on the ground. Now we're pretty well unrestricted in terms of height here because we're so far away. There's the estuary. It's rather nice. I think that's South End down there. Airfield. Can see a boat, can't you? I can just see a little boat there. A liner. Now, what gives you confidence to fly across water in a plane with only one engine? It's right with a twin. If we were in a twin, we wouldn't be worried because if an engine failed, then just fly on the other engine. Well, we've only got the one. And the answer is that it's been working pretty well, hasn't it? It's been going for over an hour now. So the chances of it just suddenly failing because it feels as though it's over a bit of water, pretty low. It doesn't know whether it's over land or water. That's the good thing. And it's a pretty dumb. If it was smart, it would know that it would be a bit of a laugh to fail now. But it doesn't. So it just carries on going. What I always do do though is wear a life jacket if you're going to cross water at all. Not that it will save you, you'd still die. But at least you'd die thinking you had a chance. You can you can buy life jackets and with the aviation ones they just hang around your neck like a horseshoe and um, uh, after you've landed successfully and climbed out of the plane you just um, pull the toggle and they inflate. I tried one, we had an old one where the cylinder was out of date and we I put it on and pulled it and uh, two things uh, happened which were a bit, you know, which you I wasn't expecting and um, I'm glad I tried, I practiced with one. Um, and one is that, first of all, it, it inflates so tightly round your neck, that it's like, it doesn't strangle you, you know, but I mean really, that's, it's, it gets stuck round your neck, pretty tight. And uh, that's not a bad thing because you don't want it, I mean it's really designed to keep your head above water isn't it, so it's looking after your head, really doesn't want your body to cause your head to slip out so it's, it's pretty damn tight. The other thing is that um, gas under pressure that's released suddenly gets very cold. It's uh, that's a physical phenomenon. It just you know so it's and it's so it's icy. It's really really cold. When when it inflates it like gets condensation on it. It gets so cold. That's Benbridge in front of us. Sandown is, uh, this is Benbridge is here, and Sandown is here. And um, what we're going to do now, we're, we're um, going to land on it to the southwest, and so that is, is in this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come round Benbridge, and I'm going to come along and land Sandown in this direction. So now we can start the descent. So I'm going to... We're going to get some energy from the um, potential energy of the plane in the descent, so we don't need to throttle so much. Having said that, um, you know, we may as well uh, make some use of the height to increase the speed, to uh, decrease the time it takes to descend. There's that uh, liner. That's Sandown, I think. There's a there's a ferry service that goes from Portsmouth over there to Sandown. 
because one of the things about this trip is that if I was to take a car and three people on that ferry it would cost a fair bit of money especially if I just decided to do it on the spur of the moment at that day I'd have to drive all the way from North Kent down to Portsmouth and then and then hang around get on the ferry then get off the ferry the other side and I, I admittedly I'd have a car on the Isle of Wight but I challenge you to have as much fun in a car on the Isle of Wight as you can have in a plane and um, if you added up four ferry tickets the cost of running the car and the, you know and the petrol and everything plus the fact that I wouldn't be anywhere near the Isle of Wight now I mean it's taken us just over an hour isn't it well in an hour I wouldn't even be past London at this point in the car Now you'll find that cost-wise, there's not a, I mean, there's a difference. There's not a massive, massive difference. This plane costs um, 120 pounds an hour to fly, so it's cost me about 150 pounds. £180, say. But most of that is fuel. The actual plane itself cost 12000 There's four of us own it, so that we only pay £3,000 each to buy it. Now, I challenge you to get a decent car for £3,000. Then you, you have got a more in the way of maintenance with a plane than you have with a car. Um, it has to be uh, serviced every 50 hours in the air. And you're talking sort of several thousand pounds a year. For service, but again, if you're splitting it between the four of you, it's you know you might get away with a thousand pounds a year on servicing. Well, I mean that even that for for a car that would be good. There's Benbridge. It's a nice airfield. I mean, it's a nice airfield, but uh, it's pretty sterile, especially at weekends, as I say, because it's a. Um, it's really designed to. Uh, there was, a, was it a helicopter manufacturer based there? I think. Now I'm pretty high here, so I'm going to drop some flaps. In fact, I'll drop two lots of flaps, and then we'll. I don't know if you can you see the airfield here? There's the airfield here. Now, if I said bumfish to you, would you know what I was talking about? If you listened to the previous video, you would, because it's the initialism for the landing checks. Brakes are off. Undercarriage is down and locked. Mixture is rich. That's this thing here. Mixture is fully in. Magnetos on both. Yep. Flaps. Well, flaps are set according to what we want. We're just drifting in here on no with no engine at all. In fact, um, we're not going to get there. I think if we just drift in, so I'm going to put a little bit of uh, power. Flaps and fuel. Well, we've got plenty of fuel here, so uh, if we need to, if we, if we don't land off this approach, if we need to go around, we can go around easily. We need to call Benbridge and tell them we're coming in. So we say Benbridge Golf Bravo Alpha Foxtrot Mike to land. And because I think I think they've unregulated in terms of air traffic control, they've got like a volunteer air traffic control. They just say land at your discretion. They can't tell you to land. They can't tell you it's safe to land. All they can say is, you know, you can infer from the fact that we haven't said don't land that you're probably okay. But it's it's the pilot's decision to land or not. And the H stands for hatches and harnesses. 
So the hatches is basically the overhead hatch or the door and harnesses is the straps that are holding you in. So you want those nice and uh, tight in case you come to a rather abrupt stop. It's quite a busy airfield this and uh, you have to watch out. Once I landed here and one of the locals came screaming in front of me, did a handbrake turn right in front of me and uh, landed in front of me without making any radio calls at all. So. Be prepared for anything, anything and everything at these local sites. Landing's all about momentum. Height, weight, speed. Add it all up, you know, just sum it all up and just decide for yourself where you are. It's not on a plateau like that, as I say, this is a feature because this is sort of early scenery. I'm going to put all the flaps down because, um, unlike Manston, this field is not, not massive and um, we don't want to be landing 600 yards up here. idea to tell your, your, um, your passengers to shut up. When you get below a thousand feet you should have a rule that uh, pass all the passengers are quiet. There we are. We're going to not have any trouble with going off the end of the runway there. Let's hold it off to get as lower touchdown speed as we can. And uh, the clubhouse and everything that we could see while we were in the air has now vanished because they're all two-dimensional. <laughs> oh, I suppose there is something to be said for add-on scenery after all, but I know where the clubhouse is, it's over there on the left, so we'll um, we'll taxi up and we'll vacate left. And uh, what we'll do is um, we'll just have a little, we'll get a taxi and go down the seafront. I've brought my knotted handkerchief and I'll buy you an ice cream and we can do a bit of people watching for the day. But uh, make sure we'll have to just have to make sure we get back um, with enough time to fly back before it gets dark. But anyway, be a nice way to spend a Sunday. Right, I'll shut down, and um, if you want to get out, and stretch your legs, and I'll meet you, and uh, we'll um, we'll go and uh, see what we can find to do.